We play for keeps, Cuddy. You ain't heard about the huddle fire with no with D Lane. We trying to get it off the muscle. Walters caught the pick and ran it back without a tussle. Blow the whistle, coach. Time to get back to the huddle. Welcome to the 510 Huddle. We back again, heading to the last week of the NFL season. Raiders 9 and 7, 49ers 9 and 7. D Lane Eagles nine and seven. How you doing today? I am feeling great, man. My Eagles secured a spot last week. We on the four game winning streak. I believe we won six out of the last seven. Playing some good ball. On the phone right now. Yeah, I'm playing some real good ball. I mean, clinched it. Jalen Hurts. But let's kick it off here with the with the Raiders after a crazy season. For they found a way to be alive here in Week 18, nine and seven. And it's real simple for the Raiders when they're in. Um, let me ask you, Dulane, is this the most impressive season that you've seen of Derek Carr showing everything he's had to handle and the lack of talent that's been around him? Man, um, I still, you know, uh, I still, that 2016 season lives in the back of my mind just because he was fire, firing on all cylinders and hitting all his all his uh, all his receivers and just making timely throws in that season, but this season just with everything against him or everything that was against him and his team, a lot of the setbacks they uh, suffered this season. You got to put it right up there. I, me personally, just because the play was a little better, I feel like when you're watching the tape from 2016, I'm slightly go with 2016 for Derek Carr, but it's still right there, man. Like they, just because of everything he had to deal with, we talked about this a little bit, a little bit last week when I asked you, man, like who would you just give some of this credit to? I think the first person you said was Derek Carr, and then the next was the coach, and then Mayock, I believe. I think that's what you said. But yeah. uh, I know you definitely gave some credit to Derek Carr, and you know I got to tip my hat to him for what he's been able to accomplish this season, and just to have you guys in position to make the playoffs with one with, with one game to go. No, I agree. To me, this season is what – I'm not, I'm not calling him this – I mean, I'm, he's not that. But to have a season like this, this is what top five quarterbacks do, where it doesn't matter really how the season goes. They find a way to keep their team alive, and that's by having a winning record every year, right? We've seen it – again, not comparing him. We've seen it with Russell, got awful teams on defense – how, and for some reason, they found a way to win 10 games. I think that's what Derek Carr is doing. I think this season is more impressive to me than 2016, only because 2016, everything went well. Michael Crabtree had 10 touchdowns. Amari Cooper, uh, Khalil Mack won Defensive Player of the Year. Things were just going your way. And I think uh, we've ridden the Raiders off a lot of different times this season, and they keep finding ways to win. That's the most impressive piece to me of Derek Carr. Um, and to me... I think I will it was clear cut. This is the best season if they win on Sunday. If they win Sunday night against the Chargers. To me, this is the best season he's had. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to look at the stats to see uh, because I think in the past we've seen oh it's a nice stat game from Carr, but the eye test didn't match it. So I think if he wins Sunday, without question, this would be his best season. Now, what I think is um, what will be interesting is his contract extension. I think if he obviously takes him to the playoffs, you have to give him a contract extension. The question then is going to be how much, but uh, let's see if he can win Sunday. Do you, uh, with obviously with the Raiders staying alive, and we gave credit to different people last week we talked, outside of, you know, Carr and Gus Bradley, do you think there's any one player that you think has helped keep this roster together throughout, uh, obviously throughout this rocky season? I mean, Derek Carr, but you said besides Derek Carr, correct? Yeah, the only person I can think of is Mad Max. Yeah, Max. Um, and then I just got to the, – the only other person I can think of um, is uh, Hunter Riffro. You know, just with the type of season he's having. Man, and, and, you know, the type of season he's having, it seems like everything is just timely for him. Like, we all knew coming out you, he was a big playmaker, you know, in crucial moments, given what he did in college on the biggest stage. And we all knew he was money on third down after, like, his first season. The coming in and after his first season in it in the NFL. But for him to do what he's done out of the slot this season with everything that's going on, uh man, you gotta tip your hat to um little little Hunter Renfro as well, man. He's been balling his ass off. And he's doing it against some of the best DBs like Kenny Moore. I mean, I, everyone knows I'm a huge Kenny Moore fan. One of the best nickel DBs in the league. 
And Hunter uh, came up big in every moment he needed to. And I, I keep thinking, like, man, like, imagine, again, obviously this is gone, it's never coming back, but just Ruggs pair with, with Renfro was just perfect combination um, because there's no way to bracket those two receivers together on the field. Um, so, and also, I mean, Waller's been out for five weeks. So you just, if you just look at the Raiders' offensive weapons, it like there's no way they win in games with Zay Jones, Hunter. Did he play this week, Zay, or no? Waller? Yeah, he's, they say he's playing this week. So right, it's, uh, I got a quick for question game. for you. I got a quick question for you. Though. I'm not sure who I heard uh, or who I heard make this comparison after Sunday when y'all beat the Colts, but it struck it struck it struck something in me when I heard it because I was like, damn, like I'm not sure if that's the the exact comparison, but he fits the mold of this player like exactly. And I'm talking about Derek Carr here as far as like the way he plays. It could be turnovers. It could be ups and downs. He got a, he got an arm. He can still spin it, or he's always been able to spin it. He uh, he 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 has the most, or he's at least top two or three, I believe, in fourth quarter come comeback since he's been in the league. You know who he reminds me of, and I believe Kyle, Colin Cowher said this uh, after Sunday's game: a quarterback that he plays like. Cool, Tony Romo. Mmm. Wow, that's a that's a that's really good comparison. Said, that's what I said. I was it just hit me, and I was like, man, like it just hit something. I was like, possibly, like that might be a good comparison. Now, the, now the question would be, and I love because we haven't seen like think about it, we've we've seen Derek Carr that 2016 season light it up in a regular. We have what Sunday is is a playoff game. That's a I mean, mm-hmm. simple. And I would say this: last Sunday was a playoff game against the Colts, and we've seen Derek Carr. I mean. That, that third and ten throw where he evaded Darius Leonard and threw a dime to Renfro, that was a playoff throw. So I want to see what he can do. in a, This is a playoff game Sunday, right? And if he wins that game, we can see what he's going to do. They play like a Bills or Patriots in round one. He can't have so him I'm, turn I'm excited to see Derek Carr in the playoff. Because we know, we know Tony Romo in the playoffs. That's that's where it uh, ha, got iffy for your boy. Mm-hmm. But just play uh, style, right? Like up, yeah. it can be up and down for him. He got a rifle. He can throw the ball, right? Like don't it don't it fit a little bit four quarter comeback? I think it does. Here. At yeah. the end of the day, it was just talking arm talent. You know, Derek Carr is one of the top throwers just in the league. Just pure arm talent. We get frustrated with him because we always feel like he leaves a little. Like even a Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins athletically can't do what Derek Carr does, right? Derek Carr ran a four six five at his combine. So we was like, Derek, we expect more of that all around QB play, and we've seen it, like we said, in 2016. So I think, um, you know, him playing with nothing to lose, and who knows, this season might have him be, you know, this season might help his career throughout. Like I, I had everything go wrong this season, and still found a way. So I think this this could be a building year for Carr's career, where maybe you can be a consistent. 12 to 8 quarterback consistently not you know have games where you look like an 18th quarterback so maybe this year can help him finally be that consistent 12 to 8 level type of quarterback yeah no like Tony was like you said like Tony was consistent 8 to 12 quarterback every year you knew he was going to be top 12 no matter what every year and in NFL if you can get that in NFL you have a shot at playoffs and a shot every year yeah but let's get it so let's head on to the Niners. And I think um oh real piece, uh last piece on the Raiders, obviously mm-hmm. on their season. Um obviously rumors yesterday with Harbaugh. Uh they said he's interested in NFL. If he comes back, he's interested in joining the Raider Raiders report by Fellman for Fox Sports. What's your thoughts on Harbaugh and the Raiders? How's that fit for you? I would love it. I would love it. I totally, totally outside the box. Not a Raider. I think exactly what you were, talk, were talking about a few weeks ago. Um, came out of left field. He was in college. I've always felt like after the first year of me or two of me seeing him back in Michigan, I was just, I was just like, no, nah, Harbar, he's an NFL coach. The Harbar bloodline, him and his brother, they, they deserve to be on the NFL. That's, that's his stage. I loved, I loved his time with the Niners. I'm not even a Niner fan. I, my family hates Thanks. the Niners, and he damn near had me watching Niner football when, when he was coaching the Niners. The way they, they ran the football, they were tough, they played stout defense, they would hit you in the mouth. I just love Harbaugh, and I think he will fit excellent for the Raiders. I agree, and, I, and I'm, I think with Harbaugh, too, what I really like about him, you said the time with the Niners, I think what's different in Gruden, Gruden was an asshole, obviously a racist and everything we see with the emails. 
you, all you hear about is obviously Harbaugh has an e, a ego, but his players love him. Like, and, and the things he did, like, he's the one that drafted Colin Kaepernick, right? He's, mm-hmm. Kaepernick was good under him. So I, I believe when Harbaugh comes in, that's a culture changer. Year two, the Niners went from a shit show with, uh, what was, I don't want to disrespect his name, all time great uh, linebacker, Singletary. Um, was going through a bunch of coaches, and year two he shows up, takes him to the Super Bowl. I mean, what it was there uh, five years and four of the five that went to the NFC Championship? Like it's insane. Um, so I, I think Harbaugh is a culture changer, and he showed up in Michigan. They beat, uh, they uh, they went to the college playoff, had their best season in almost seventeen years. That's what Harbaugh does. Everywhere he goes, he wins. And to me, this isn't like an Urban Meyer or Dabo. No. Uh, he's proven, um, he's proven on the NFL. Harbaugh is coached in the NFL. He was the Raiders QB coach in 2003, right? So Harbaugh has been all over prior to being with the Niners, um, coached big programs. You got to remember, he revamped Stanford's program with Andrew Luck, and he groomed David Shaw uh, to be a top coach. So his coaching tree is there too. And this would be the best part to me if Harbaugh goes to the Raiders. You know, Fangio is his guy, and if Fangio is not back with the Broncos – that's it. again. I love Gus Bradley, but I'm taking Fangio all day. So I think this is now. You know, I think I'm glad Mark Davis went out and said this, and uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. But I'm more worried about us winning Sunday, and it's going to be weird though. If the Raiders win Sunday, go to the playoffs. I mean, you got to give Richie an interview. Got to give it. But let's be real here. If you got a chance to get Jim Harbaugh, you go get him. But let's hop on to the Niners. Um, Trey area. Hey, let's see if that hook on. We're going to see. Um, I really, at first, I would say his first start, but his first real start in NFL is his second. Uh, second, well, He's played a game and a half prior to Sunday. Uh, they're playing the Texans. First half was really shaky by him, right? Uh, second half, got it going. What was your overall thoughts on Trey Lance's first start? Um. It looks like when you're watching them, it looks like a young kid with not a lot of ex- a lot of uh, with not a lot of ex- a lot of experience. It's really as simple. That's what it looks like. Um, but man, he has it. Oh my god! When you watch him, he has he has it. He has that it factor. He has the big play abil- ability of a Pat Mahomes, of a Josh Allen. Did you see that? Ro- like every time, every time. Yeah, uh, I, I think I seen Croc say it. <laughs> every time you see uh, Kyle cook up that that big. That big rollout, that big QB boot, you know that and it, it's a two-man route. Oh, he cooked something up and somebody opened in the back end. He hit Debo on a nice strike. Um, his arm is electric. He can run. Um, I felt like in the first half, yeah, it was shaky. But I, uh, to be honest to me, I felt like it was more so on Kyle Shanahan, the offensive play calling. I feel like he opened up the playbook a little more for the kid in the second half. Got his legs a little bit more involved. He had eight carries for the game. Um I love what I've seen, especially for for this to be like only his second start. Um, I love what I've seen, Zach. I love what I've seen from the kid. I, I'm with you. I'm just I watched it, and all I kept thinking the whole game was why didn't he start all year? <laughs> no, That's I all I just thought. The whole what does he do differently than Jimmy? You have to worry about another player on the field every play. Now, what I did notice this: Trey doesn't get the ball out of his hands fast. There's a lot of reads where he was late to, but he's a rookie. That's going to happen unless you come in, you know, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, right? I mean, one of the a few rare quarterbacks, you're going to have a learning curve. And we're seeing different quarterbacks. Zach Wilson looked disgustingly god-awful half the year. The last three weeks, he's been making throws, stepping up the pockets, taking step uh, taking uh, step by step in his development. So back to Trey Lance. I'm seeing tight window throws. He that throw to Brandon Ayuk that Brandon Ayuk turned into a 30 yards after the catch rope. Or the throw to Debo rope. He had another throw. It was a crazy throw to Kittle who made a nice catch, a rope over the safety, nice 30 yard line. So he has a, an arm talent that uh, I say with top 10 arm talent in the league, just arm um, and things to work on quicker with his reads, um, knowing how to get the dump off. And, and he, he needs to work on his presence in the pocket. Now, again, this is, not being the guy up judging him at like eight year vet, but he runs out the pocket a lot, right? You know how yeah. Yeah, not not compare how Carr sidestepped Darius Leonard to make that throw last weekend. Well, Lance being an athletic quarterback, he's not sidestepping. He's completely leaving the pocket. 
But again, Justin Fields was doing that early on. That comes with development. And if you're an athletic quarterback, you want to use your legs. For sure. So I thought I was really impressed with Trey Lance. And all I kept thinking was he looks like a guy that if he played the whole year, I mean, I think he look really, really good right now. Because he has everything you're looking for. He's big, strong, fast, and has a rope. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I think you uh, you hit it on the uh, you hit the nail on the head earlier. Is that he this kid very very well might have a top ten arm right now in the game right now. I seen another as far as if we're talking about electric fine electric fine arm talent, he has it. He's he's up there. He's up there with, with all the best guys. Uh, um, I, I, it's tough to say would they be in the same position just because. Um, they struggled uh, this year with Jimmy, with, with blue chippers being in and out, and regular guys being in and out. I just, I honestly don't. I, 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 I will say his play will be a lot better if he started all year. I think he would de- uh, for sure be one of those guys that by the end of the year he would be hitting on all cylinders, damn near on on a Joe, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert type level from their rookie year. I think by the end of the uh, season he would be playing like that. But I don't know if the team if the team would still be in the same position. I think that'd be more around like five, six, seven wins if he started up the whole season. That's why I feel like me personally. Five, six, seven. I mean, there was games Jimmy won throwing the ball ten times this year. I I wouldn't say that just because of the amount of blue chippers on this team. I mean, I think they would have found a way to win a lot of these games. And they only beat, again, I'm going to keep saying it. They only they beat, beat no, exactly. They, they beat that two, many. Well, they yeah. beat two teams with a winning record. I think if Trey Lance was playing some of those games, they would have won some. Playoff caliber teams is what, you, is what you're saying with a rookie guy. They, is, that's what you're telling me. No, I'm saying since they only beat two teams with a winning record, only two. Out of the exactly. seventeen games they played, uh-huh. only have two wins against the teams winning record. So, so that's the rookie case. quarterback, you you're telling me they beat the Packers? You are telling me they beat the the Cardinals? You're telling me they beat the Cardinals twice? They lost the no, Cardinals twice? No, I'm I'm not saying they win. I'm saying since that was the case, that's great development games where Trey Lance played the Packers, where Trey Lance is playing these tough tough opponents. That's games to build off. Now, Texans, no wrong, no disrespect. They beat the Chargers. Or whatever. They're a four win team in their last in almost every category. That's that's a good game, but it's not. I want my my uh my rookie quarterback having these games against the, the Packers, these better teams, the Seahawks, and so on. He he played one half because these are people we're playing on a regular basis. No, now, you, now maybe for Jimmy you will have no, no, no. standards. This is the whole point. Of that. Jimmy's not back for the team next year. I know, not to, to the rookie team quarterback, team. I'm, so all I'm saying is to the last point you just said, you will take this performance versus any guy, any team. If you're a rookie, if you have a rookie quarterback. Same thing with Justin Fitt. Like whoever they play, we'll take the performance, especially especially if it's good. Even if it, even if it's versus oh, the shitty yeah, I'm team. taking a performance. He just played all year. That's it. You don't. Oh, you're not in the playoffs. If that's they true. lose Sunday, they're not in the playoffs. So right here, if the Saints win and the Niners lose on Sunday, the Niners are not in the playoffs. So you play Jimmy all year. And still might miss the playoffs if you don't handle business on Sunday. So, again, what was the whole fucking point of sending Trey Lance and bringing back a $20 million quarterback where, again, you don't have DBs, you could have reassured. That's all I'm I'm sitting back and, like, you're 9-7 and after all this. You have all these pro bowlers. You got to pass a top uh, three linebacker, top three DN, and so on, and you're sitting at 9-7. and So that's all I'm saying, you know. Uh, I don't know. Again, I'm still confused on the plan of Kyle. You're nine and seven. We're one of the best rosters in the league, and that leads me to my next question: okay. Has Kyle underachieved with this roster this season? Yeah, has he underachieved? Yeah, I think yeah, he has. Uh, what Bosa, top five players position. Fred Warner, top five players position. Debo, top five players position. Kittle, top five players position. Trent Williams hasn't missed a game. Top five players position. That's five players on the roster that are top five on the position. How many other teams can say that? I mean, five of the what seven games they lost. They, it was a one one point game, one possession game. So I mean, they were right there, and they suffered a lot of injuries. COVID, just like everybody. A lot of else. injuries. Whoa, 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 whoa. A lot yeah. of teams have. We that the Niners. That's last year's Niners okay. suffer a lot of injuries. Not this year's Niners. Okay, and Jimmy's missed some time this year. Trey missed some time this year. Also being hurt, their rookie quarterback. So even if he, so you always keep saying, oh, that would have been the same position. Trey got hurt. Is, hey, we, are we forgetting that as well? Trey got hurt earlier this year and had to miss a few weeks. He hurt his ankle. They got a rookie running back. 
I, they got a rookie DC that's learning everything on the fly. And I yeah, actually great this year. Exactly, exactly, I was just, exactly. Like I said, I was just I'm, now that I'm looking back on, on the overview of their season. I thought he actually didn't play too or do too uh, bad this season, um, D'Amico Ryan's. But like I said, five of the seven games they lost. It was a one possession game. No, all those games are, are most of those games are against playoff caliber teams. Losses. I mean, still, you have a six ranked defense. So, like, I just feel like it's a lot of excuses. But, hey, I guess, again, 2019, you need everything to be perfect. No injuries and not a single weakness on the team. That's I all I'm this. Are they underachieved because I believe – I thought the uh, Niners would be a bit better yeah, no, like, this year. Bro, no disrespect to your Eagles. Who has a better roster right now, the Eagles or the 49ers? Yeah, the Eagles – I mean, the 49ers and the 49ers by far got more blue chippers. And have this, y'all have the same roster. I mean, same record. Yeah. With the first year, co- like we could say all the excuse. If the Eagles would have six wins right now, we could have a lot of good excuses. Uh, a first year starting young quarterback, first year coach, young rookie receiver. We could have make excuses all day for the Eagles, but we're not. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to say this is called an underachieving season to me, Kyle Shanahan. Right? You didn't have you didn't play with uh, Mullins all year, right? That's an excuse, right? You have you have Jimmy, you have Trey Lance. That's two quarterbacks. So yeah, if Trey got hurt early on, and he brought Jimmy. Okay, play Jimmy. So I just thought he he wasted a season of a of a really good roster by not getting Trey Lance started early and have only winning nine games with this roster and you have to win to make sure you're in a playoff spot Sunday. I just think that's underachieving. But you know, all of it could be erased if you win Sunday and then hey, they go to playoff win, win two playoff games. That's a successful season. So I could be looking really dumb in three weeks, but we're gonna see. But because at the end of the season, if you make the playoffs, you judge shit. The Giants went nine and seven, won a Super Bowl. So you judge what you do in the playoffs if you make it. So and they got the yeah, they got the they recipe. They got the recipe to go on the run, uh, go on the run. They can run the football and they, they can play defense. Uh, you're right on that. And we just we just spoke about Jalen Hurts, right? And it, what what he's done with the Eagles team and first year coach Senator. How do you say his last name again? Always mess it up. Uh, Sirianni. Sirianni. Um, and it seems like Sirianni and Hurts have been better week over week, week by week together. Uh, I know you talked, you were a little frustrated with Jalen Hurts early in the year. Are your thoughts now? See the future of the franchise, man. Um, I think it's tough because I definitely want to give my give him his credit. This is basically his rookie year, he got us in the playoffs. Definitely get credit for that, especially with first year head coach. Um, as this season as this season's played out, especially after this past week, um, I feel like Jalen didn't have no gaudy numbers this past week. I think he only threw for like twenty yards, maybe twenty three attempts, no touchdowns, passing touchdowns, no interceptions. But it might have been one of his best throwing games. I think he's like seventeen for twenty six or something like that. But it was probably one of his best throwing games as far as just hitting the routine throw. I think you you heard me say that uh, numerous times on the podcast. I'm still frustrated with the young man because he doesn't hit the routine throw enough for me. And um, I still feel like we're kind of there. I still feel like uh, even with us being in the playoffs and moving forward, I still I just like him. Say. I, 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 it's hard for me to love him. I just got to see a little more on a consistent basis. But who I will say that I'm growing, I'm starting to love. He still ain't my, he ain't my guy, Dougie P. But Sirianni growing on me, Zay. Why? He's a real coach. And I'm going to tell you why. My favorite coaches that I always loved was not – I'm a systems guy. I don't like I don't like the Chip Kelly's. Oh my God, those are some of the worst years of my life being a Chip uh, Eagles fan during Chip Kelly's time. I don't I don't like a guy that believes in his system more than his players. Early on in the season, when I was watching my Eagles, I used to come on this call all the time, tell you how undisciplined we were. I didn't like the coach. I didn't like the play calling, none of it, and so on. So we just because we weren't playing to our strengths. Sirianni came out. We got Rager. We got uh, Devontae. We got these young, speedy receivers. He's trying to sling the ball. We got Ertz. We got Goddard still. Or we got Ertz still. We got Goddard. Goddard. And um, he's just trying to sling the ball left and right. You remember what I said at the beginning of the podcast? We won a four-game winning streak. We won, we, we've won six of our last seven, I believe. And we locked in in the playoffs last week. Why? Because we have the number one rushing attack in football. And we have a top ten defense. Um, say I, we have a recipe. We can be dangerous in the playoffs if he will, if the quarterback was a little more consistent. I feel like on hitting throws, I feel like we can be a real, uh, like a real contender. 
say if we have a little more consistent quarterback play. I feel like he's a step or two away, but our team is dangerous. I love what I've seen from Sirianni. I'm with you, and I think people. For, I think if people forget how young Jalen Hurts is, uh, he turns 22 this year. Uh, he, you know, I think we remember watching him at Bama. He was 18 years old starting at Bama, so I think people thought he was like a six year senior. Like, nah, dude is really young. So with Jalen, I'm seeing every year. We started what half the year last year, or a little less than half, and has a four year under his belt, which is a playoff season. I think Jalen Hurts can be really, really good in this league because you're seeing the year-over-year improvement, how young he is. Then he has the qualities you want. Number one, clear-cut leader. I mean, we saw the incident with the shitty-ass Washington football team stadium falling, damn near taking his ankle out, helping the fans out. Leader, second piece, he has an arm, and third piece, athletic. And I think if you just keep building the work ethic, he's going to hit those easy throws, and you might have more of a Josh Allen-type project, again, not saying – Um, He's going to be that. But the type of growth you saw with Josh Allen, I think you can see what hurts. I'm a big believer in him just because he's a winner. Everywhere he goes, he wins. I I mean, one at Bama, one with Oklahoma, first year starter, one with the Eagles. He has the same record as Carson Wentz this year. And I think you're seeing how how Howie Roseman needs his flowers. Built a a Philadelphia roster and won a Super Bowl. Hey, bad shit happened. Carson Wentz tried to bring his shit down. Howie said, I still got the ship. I got it. Brought a new okay, coach. Okay. Got a playoff team. Got one of signed Darius Slay, one of the best, not the best uh, man to man corners in the NFL. So I, I'm giving a huge shout out to Howie, Jalen Hurts, and uh, your new coach. Uh, fuck, I'm butchering his name. Uh, Sirianni. Sirianni. I got to get these Italian names down. I've been messing with the name up on the Raiders. My fault for all the towns out there. I get y'all names right. But yeah, um, he might not get no votes, but uh, he, and he might not win it. But I definitely believe he should get a few um, Coach of the Year awards or Coach I, I of agree. the Year votes. Nick Sirianni should get a few votes. Yeah, first year coach to make the playoffs. And I mean, they went, they're going to, I'm pretty sure they're going to win. Started out two and five. I think we started out two and five or something like that. Yeah. And that's the, that's why I would like to see what coaches like. How do you ride the highs and lows? It's like life, right? And that's why I think, not to change subjects, we kept riding the Raiders off because they're not a team that rides the highs and lows. They just, If it's low, it's low. If it's good, it's good. And to me, that shows true character and how good of a, a player coach you are. And that's what the Eagles did, right? Same yeah. thing with the Chiefs. Slow start. That's what Andy has slow start sometimes. doesn't matter. He gets the ship right. So uh, I'm really impressed with this Eagles team and Jalen Hurt. And it made me think right now, would you take? Would you trade Jalen Hurts straight up for Trey Lance? Mm. That's a good I've one. Seen an, I've seen enough of Trey in just a short. It's a small, very very small sample size. I've seen an, I've seen enough of his arm to say his arm is a, is more like we just got done arguing <laughs> in his second start. He has a top ten arm, eh? so I, I think that that answers the question right there. I got it. I will go with Trey. Just because of the higher upside. If we're talking about right now, who's a better quarterback? Jalen performing at a yeah. higher level. See, yeah, if we're talking about right now, but even if, if we're talking about right now, I still would do the trade. I, I wouldn't because, again, it's a two-and-a-half game sample size of Trey Lance. And I want to see – I've seen what Jalen Hurts does with not, not nothing's perfect around him. With a rookie receiver, no no uh, top five tight end, no – you know, he's, he's the reason the running game has gotten – uh, hot the last few weeks, like you mentioned. Yeah, he's our leader rusher. With Trey, with Trey, I mean, Trey's in the perfect situation. He doesn't have a single weakness on his team outside of two DBs. Uh, so I, I, I would go with Jalen because I think I could win in any situation with Jalen. With it's, Trey, it's, I know he has a live arm. That's all I know right now. He has a really nice arm. I don't I got know. You. Right. I got but you. Before it's a good gamble. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I was going to be a good gamble. No, that's and that's a good question. Before we move on to the last topic, Zach, I got I got to say this one last point because I just said said something a minute ago. I said my team is not that dangerous, like without the quarterback being a little more consistent, uh, quarterback play being a little more consistent in the playoffs. What I will say, Zach, and I'm not saying we can't go, we can go on the run or anything like that. But I could definitely see, see us winning the playoff game or two. And I'm gonna tell you why. I mean, you know me. I haven't missed the Eagles game. That's my team. I've been watching my team all year. I feel like every team, the Jaguars already had their they game because I think they won one or two games this year. Every team has their game in a season where you're, you're like, man, have we played already? And sometimes it actually doesn't happen, so I can't say every team. But you're always looking to play your best football. Like, can, 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 
put all three phases of the game together and play a complete game. That's what we like to say. That's what we like to say in the coaches' shoes. Coaches' shoes, and that's how that, that's what we try to aim towards. That type of greatness for our teams. Hey, special teams hitting on all the points. Offense hitting on all cylinders. Getting on, hitting on third downs. Getting in the red zone, punching it in, getting his points. Defense getting off the field, getting turnovers, getting off the field on third down. It's clicking on all cylinders. We haven't done that yet, one game yet so far. And I, I feel like we get in the playoffs and we do that, or we get the right matchup, uh, we can win a playoff game too, possibly. I believe so too. And, and only because I believe the Packers are the only complete team, like you said, uh, in the NFC, right? In the NFC playoff bracket, every NFC team has a, a weakness. And you guys have, like we said, the formula. If you can run the ball – Rush the passer and you got a quarterback that's dynamic, you have a shot in every single game. Every single game. Uh, so I'm with you on that. I always say the same reason, crazy or not, if the Niners make the playoffs, I think they're a dangerous team with, same for the same, with Trey Lance. Most of the same reasons. Yep, for yeah, most of the reason. same reasons. Yeah, so. Is that, is that you know who would be a dangerous matchup for the other team if they got my Eagles? You might be shocked by this. And I, I just feel like it's a dangerous matchup because of how they've been playing the last few weeks. Who? The Bucks. I feel like we can get them. Personally, matchup wise, if we if we just talk about matchup wise in the way, especially how we know Brady likes his teams to play going in late into the season, uh, December, January football, they have not played like that well at all the last yep. few weeks, and their run defense is not how it was the year before, and they're hurt on the back end. If we got if we got them in a round one matchup, I, I love my chances. I, I, I wouldn't bet it, but I don't want to. I don't want to disagree with you. But I always have. I got. I'm just trying to take this last week of the season, similar to the first four weeks of the season. Playoff football is completely different. So I'm just like, in a real world, are you betting against Brady, Todd Bowles, and Bruce? But yeah, like I said, I wouldn't yeah, bet against yeah. it. We, 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 like, we, we yeah. would like to say Styles make fights, and I'm just yep. saying that'd be a, that's a great matchup for us. And, and no, I agree. Us, I feel like yeah. I honestly, the best matchup for y'all would be the Cowboys. Uh, just because, yeah, just familiar, familiar uh, opponent. Yeah. And I think for Jalen, he would be the most comfortable going to that playoff game. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, he's playing that stadium a lot. So even uh, before he got to NFL, exactly. let's wrap it up. Last two, last two questions real quick. Um, first kick it off. Is Chase having the best rookie wide receiver season ever? Yeah. Got to, got to give it to him. Yeah, man. He, it's like when him and Josie went high, that fade ball is automatic. And nine times out of ten, they connect. Uh, they, he's sick. They, they, and he got a second gear. He got a gear that I didn't see him having in college football just because we know you can pull away from guys in college football. It's not that easy to pull away from guys in the NFL because they're all elite athletes. He he got another gear. He He's legit. Kid's legit. I love what Jamar Chase is doing. Uh, especially after everyone talking shit at the beginning of the year in the, in the preseason. I'm not going to say it's the best rookie season ever, though. It's the second best. Uh, the only reason I'm still taking Randy Moss's 17 touchdown rookie season over Chase. Um, but what Chase is doing, I think, is incredible. Uh, I, I don't I, think that Randy have any 200 yard games this rookie year because Chase got like two or three of them. You remember that? Remember that cowboy game with the famous three touchdowns, three catch pitcher? Yeah, yeah, that was a rookie year. <laughs> that was, <laughs> and that was because he was mad at Cowboys didn't pick him. Remember that? Yeah, and, uh, Cowboys passed up on him. But number one, Chase is having an unbelievable year, and not to knock, you know, his two hundred yard receiving games. That's inc- that's hard to do as a running back. That's incredibly hard to do at receiver. Now, the only reason, again, the only reason I got Randy above for still the best was the 17 touchdowns in 16 games. That's insane. I believe Chase has, I know he has the yard. He beat his yard. He has 1,400 yards in his touchdowns. Uh, I think he has, I think he has 10 touchdowns on the year. Yeah, we'll check. But yeah, so I'm taking Randy, but Jamar Chase is to me clear cut second. Um, it's, it's ironic. Justin Jefferson had the, uh, he beat his uh, LSU teammate rookie Mm -hmm. record last year so those two boys are incredible uh and just like you know i think a little different uh with justin jefferson he had adam thielen and then with with jamar chase you also have to account for higgins joe mixon and tyler boyd not to knock what he's doing this you can have two all pro receivers with you you still got a ball but jamar chase 
I think rookie of the year for offense, and it's no no close second. Last thing before we get out of here is that I know you gotta get out of here. Joe Burrow for real and the Bengals, they for real in the playoffs. Can they make some legit noise or no? I gotta see it to believe it. There's nothing on Joe. I don't believe in Zach Taylor. Uh, Zach Taylor's a little Cliff Kingsbury ish to me. Um, I gotta see it in the playoffs. But Joe is someone that I think he, he might be in that Pat Tom Brady conversation that you just don't bet against. You know, I, I don't know yet. Yeah, Joe yeah. just got I, some to him. I can't say what it is. He got that it to him. Yeah. What, I, what I will Capital say, going, IT. Yeah, what I will say going in before uh, we wrap it up, I am worried about the Chiefs defense. Chiefs defense scared me again. We're back because you know we was talking about last week. Yeah. Oh, That's the real offense they played. That Chiefs defense that scared me. That scared me. <laughs> going into yeah. the playoffs, I'm scared about their defense. But last, that's last, all I got. Point, last point on the Chiefs defense. Maybe that Bengals game was like, all right, y'all, we got to wake the fuck up. It's playoffs next. Like, we got two weeks of playoffs. So, we'll see. La- Real quick, last question. Pick one. Bama or Georgia next Monday for the Natty? Bama, St. Nick ain't new to this. He true to this. Yeah, I, I ain't betting with uh, they quarterback at Georgia. I like Bryce Young, the Cali kid. And you can't go wrong picking Nick, just like you can't go wrong picking Tom or Bill. That's all I got, That's man. Same. Great pod. Hey, playoff weekend. Shout out to D-Lane Eagles, Clinton, Raiders. Biggest game I've watched in my Raider life. So let's get it. Handle business. Handle business. Win the dub, brother. All right. Yes, sir. We play for keeps, Cuddy. You ain't heard about the huddle fire. We know with D-Lane, we trying to get it off the muscle. Walters caught the pick and ran it back without a tussle. Blow the whistle, coach. Time to get back to the huddle.